everyone. We are back with another super edition, number four, Lila's Secret Valentine. And I don't like this cover art. I mean, the layout of it is very cute. I don't like how the kids are portrayed. Usually it's a very soft, romantic painting. And these look more like really bad quality stock photos. That's obviously Lila by herself. The twins, no idea which is which. At one point, Elizabeth is described as wearing a pink dress. So I guess that's Elizabeth on the left. I don't think these are very flattering images of any of the kids. So in this book, wow, this book was boring. And it's if it was a normal length, 130 page book, it wouldn't be that terrible but it was 181 pages of the Young and Restless Middle School, and it was so boring. So the big deal, obviously, is that it's getting to be Valentine's Day, and the school is having a dance, which of course is going to be the greatest dance ever. And what's interesting is their dance doesn't start until 8 o'clock at night, and I haven't worked at many middle schools. I think only two. But their dances are immediately after school. But you would think these Sweet Valley twin kids, sixth graders, you would think they're going to the senior prom or something. So that's going on. And the different organizations are doing fundraising. And the unicorns decide that... People can hire them to cheer, to do a personalized cheer for someone. And that sounds so embarrassing. I would just pray that no one bought that cheer for me. And You know, what kind of school is letting the kids do this in the cafeteria at lunchtime anyway? So there's that. And then the much more commonly used fundraiser is what the Sixers are doing, that Kids can write just a real couple, two, three lines, Valentine greeting to someone else. And if they don't know what to say, because obviously Happy Valentine's Day isn't sufficient, Elizabeth and others will, for an extra dollar, write it for them. And Elizabeth has been reading a bunch of older poetry and decides that she's suddenly, you know, Elizabeth Barrett Browning Wakefield here and everything's just so completely overwritten and some of the kids get embarrassed because she basically bullied them into a really mushy note which is what they would, wouldn't ordinarily pick so that was kind of stupid and other stupid things uh elizabeth leaves a really mushy poem for todd in his locker and he's convinced that he has a secret admirer so he breaks up with elizabeth in the library come on you couldn't pick somewhere else the library is a special safe place you don't break up with people there <sighs> so then he spends the rest of the book trying to figure out who was his secret admirer and that was so painful to read and then the really big story is that lila announces she has this really great new boyfriend named gray williams but whoops he doesn't exist and this is basically the Brady Bunch plot line of Jan and her made-up boyfriend, George Glass. <laughs> sure, Jan. And then, of course, because it's Sweet Valley, Lila doesn't have to go to the dance by herself. She actually winds up with her gardener's grandson, who will agree to pretend to be gray. And it's just so stupid and predictable. And there were just a couple things. This book started off funny, and then it kind of went off the rails. So a little bit here on page three. This is Janet talking. Now, this is serious, you guys. If we want to raise enough money to hire a professional photographer to take Valentine's portraits at the dance next Friday, we have to have some really good cheers. Cheers that people will want to buy for their boyfriend or girlfriend. Now, who has a real cheer? And this hiring a photographer is something the school needs to do because it involves a contract, which is a legal document. And I'm guessing the photographer wants to be hired more than the day before. But, you know, Sweet Valley what they really should have done is pre-sell the tickets 
or the photographer price or just roll it into the price and charge everyone an extra buck or two. But, you know, it's Sweet Valley, so they're not the smartest people ever. And then page five, Kimberly Havers tells us she was working on this cheer for a couple of hours last night. Page five. She jumped up and came down in a split. Ow. Then leaped up and twirled around. Give me a K. Give me an E. Give me an N. What's that spell? Ken. Be my Valentine. Yay. It's sad that she spent hours working on that. And also the choreography doesn't make sense. Typically people end in a split because it's a pretty awkward position to get out of. You uh, would never begin a cheer in a split. Not to mention you're doing this in the cafeteria. I would not want my bare legs touching the cafeteria floor because we know the girls wear skirts when they're cheering and that's gross. So page 17 here. <sighs> this is Elizabeth. Besides, everyone in the middle school seemed to be into Valentine's Day this year. Keep in mind, they're 12. I guess the love virus has infected even me, Elizabeth thought. She frowned as she walked down the hall toward the gym. She really wanted to tell Todd how she felt. Elizabeth, that's just... Do you understand the, the emotional maturity that a 12-year-old boy has? You're just setting yourself up for disappointment. So then we have a funny little interaction between Stephen and Jessica. And... I always like when Steven harasses the the twins. It it just comes across as kind of genuine as opposed to him being the perfect child. And, oh, he loves his twin sisters so much. And it's like, you know, they're all young teenagers. So I do think it's funny when he teases them. So on 19, Elizabeth is blathering about her, one of her poems. And Jessica, I don't get it. Say me nay. What's that supposed to mean? Steven. It means until you tell me no, stupid. Or, to put it in language you would understand, until you, like, say, like, get lost. Okay, babe? <laughs> and then, um, page 21, Mrs. Wakefield. Goodness, Elizabeth. I had no idea you could compose something like that. Stephen leaned toward Jessica. Compose means made up, he whispered. So that was funny. And then the last thing is just a continuity nitpicking issue. This is on page 127. They're at the Fowler Manor. It's not just a house, it's a manor. And they tell us, there was a small bench there beneath a large arbor where Lila went to be alone. Now she slumped down on it dejectedly. Since it was only February, none of the roses were in bloom, but the bushes were covered with green leaves. And on page 47, she just told us that she had a bunch of white roses that the housekeeper had brought in. So, continuity. It's like, how can you not even remember what she wrote 80 pages earlier? And you, you have to think this book had at least one editor. I would hope so. And yeah, they missed it. So, overall, this book was just horribly boring and... We're never going to see this gray, this fake Gray Williams kid again. And just so many of the kids were acting out of character. And it, it was just, it was too much. All this Valentine drama would fit better in the high school series. I have a really hard time believing a bunch of 12 year olds are that romantically inclined. So not a good book. Super predictable. I don't recommend it. If you are into the fake boyfriend story, the Brady Bunch satire movies, the second one in particular, handle the George Glass story a lot better. So skip out on this one. Uh, the next one, actually why I read this is because I wanted to read the next one, which is The Twins Take Paris. So I'll get to that one soon. This one, eh, I guess there's no love in my heart for this book. But thanks for watching. Bye.